all right, let's just let's just wing it. I don't have a good intro. So I've talked before about the fact that I was diagnosed being on the autism spectrum. And naturally because of this fact, I feel like I kind of need to gravitate toward TV shows and movies that have this as part of the plot. So let's talk about Atypical, a Netflix original series about a boy named Sam Gardner who's a high school senior who is autistic and he wants to get into the dating world. Despite the fact that in all honesty, he is severely under-equipped to handle any kind of extremely nuanced and complicated conversations with people, much less dating a girl. In fact, the only people that he really seems to be able to talk to easily are a co-worker of his and his therapist. On the surface, this is just another coming-of-age kind of story, with a twist of a mental condition such as autism to kind of spice things up a little bit. But when you start to dig a little bit deeper into this, you realize it's more of a family drama. We have a mom and wife who's having fidelity issues and feels the need to constantly baby her son and make sure that he's okay. We have a dad who's trying to connect with both of his kids, but one of them's his son who he's not really sure how to connect with because of the autism thing, which I can attest to. That's kind of a difficult barrier at times. So it's going to be a little bit harder to just communicate and connect with somebody on that level, even if you try very hard. And the other one's a teenage daughter. Guys, don't get chicks. Even if they made them. Let's just be real here. And a daughter who's, okay, the, the daughter's basically just going through stock teenage girl. I have a bright future, but I'm trying to make decisions and things are happening kind of stuff. She's kind of, she's kind of bland. But all said, this show does have a fairly interesting family dynamic. None of it ever feels forced. Like a constant thing that you'll notice between the mom and the main character, Sam, is that the mom really wants to safeguard him and make sure that he's okay because she doesn't want him to have a mental breakdown or a panic attack or anything like that because autism kind of naturally lends itself to that sometimes when things aren't going quite the way you want it. Personal experience here, I can attest. So like there's this whole little subplot where this parent-teacher conference thing or whatever, it's trying to come up with uh, a theme for the prom and the mom suggests, hey, what about all the kids who want to go to prom but they can't because they're autistic and loud noises and kind of flashing lights messes with messes them up and it makes them nervous and freak out. And she's talking about her son obviously because and there's another scene that kind of drives this home a little bit more because it's very clear that the dad is, he's not sure how to connect with his son or his daughter, but he's making an effort and he doesn't diminish either of them. Whereas the mom, she really is mostly focused on just the son. And this kind of culminates into a scene in a later episode where the boyfriend of the daughter basically calls out the mom saying, hey, he acts like he has two kids, you act like you have one, saying, hey, why are you just focusing on the son? Don't diminish your daughter's accomplishments or anything like that. It's like one of those really painfully awkward scenes that only really here at a dinner table when someone decides to really make things awkward and stand up and talk when everybody else just wants someone to shut up, but it's something that needs to be said. It's very much a hit home kind of scene. If I could complain personally about anything in this show, it's probably just how Sam acts at times because it's very clear that he wants to date his therapist and he has it in his head that he needs a girlfriend for practice. So he's kind of using a girl at one point and being a little bit callous in every other instance that he's talking to people. Let's go for story time for a moment. See you there. You st 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 stay back. See, my parents did their best to make sure that I was properly socialized. So when I see people just generally being rude when they don't need to be, it kind of sets off some alarm bells in my head. It's like, dude, why? But even I admit, sometimes I'm a bit spotty and don't understand when I'm being rude or if I'm being rude. But all said and done, when someone's making an obvious faux pas when it comes to socializing, I get kind of angry. But when I kind of thought back about how he acts in relation to how his mother treats him, it kind of makes sense that he would act this way because she's probably coddled him a bit too much so he's not really in the know. And he's starting to realize this. It's very clear that he's making an effort to change, he just doesn't understand how to do it. And he's doing this completely on his own. He's not doing this being propped by anybody but himself for the most part. There's even one moment in the season finale where he tries to make things up to his ex-girlfriend, who he was using as his practice girlfriend, by diving into a pool, which he's a germaphobe, he hates being in anything that other people have been in, getting her necklace, which is down at the bottom of the pool, that she lost, handing it to her, asking for forgiveness, and they make up. And it's like, okay, that's a great piece of character development. Good for him. He's actually growing as a person, so I have hopes for season two, he's gonna stop being as much of a callous individual and be more of a, hey, my bad, I didn't understand that. So if you like family dramas and you're interested in learning a bit more about the spectrum or anything like that, you could find a worse show. A typical is pretty good. I believe it's only eight episodes for the first season, but a new season was renewed not long after it released, so it's gonna be around for a little bit longer. Anyway, I'm Danny Movement. Have a good day.